welcome back to store management system this is going to be 23rd episode today we are going to look the exception handling middleware how to handle exceptions globally in asp.net uh, core applications um, in dotnet 7 so let me log into the application you can see uh, the product is already added that we added last time uh, so we will do some minor improvements as well but first of all let's cover the main part of today's tutorial that is going to be the middleware so i will start by adding a new folder on the web project and i will name it middlewares okay if i see if uh, it's already been there i might already have been added this one so i will click on and include in the project i will delete the new folder from here and inside the middleware i will add a new class all right so this is going to be a c sharp class i can say it's exception middleware like this and it should extend from i middleware this interface from um s product core http module and it requires us to implement its um, method which is invoke async and uh, i will gonna remove this one we don't need this uh, i will start by adding try catch and the middleware concept in dotnet uh, 7 or sp.net core is very simple every request will be going through those set of middlewares and a response will come back by parsing back from those uh, going through from those middlewares right so every request which will be uh, which will happen to this server will pass through this middleware so if we just wrap that request in try cache whenever in that life cycle exception handles it will caught you know get caught here in that catch block so i will use a wait like this and i will call the next method or next um, delegate and i will pass context inside that next um, delegate so in this catch i can do is um, let's say um, we can see uh, what actually message um, we have here in this catch block all right so our middleware is ready and we can use that middleware inside our application but before that let's see if there is any exception happen what will uh, how, how the application behave currently so if i just throw new exception just to see how my application respond to that exception this is a test exception all right let me quickly press ctrl f5 to see the behavior of the application and we we have returned the exception on this page so that page is um that page is broke so this is how currently this application is behaving uh, let's try by integrating that exception handling middleware so we need to add this one here just before those routing details 
Um, adding the word for its option. App dot use middleware and we are going to use exception middleware like this and this is not going to work directly why is that so let me give you the reason uh, before that let me just start the application again and as soon as application gets started we will get an internal server error and it says no service type of this exception middleware is provided or registered which means we need to register our custom exception middlewares as well so we, as, as we already know the service get registered here so we need to add that um, service here as well uh, register custom exception so we need to add builder dot services dot add and we know that every time there is a new request we need to capture that that request um in other words we need to capture uh this um exception per request so for that one we will go with add transient and we will use um exception middleware right so every time there is a new request we need to have a new instance of that class okay let me rerun the application this time it should work fine all right so now you can see that this is test exception uh we don't have that broken page now we have handled that exception gracefully so every time there is an exception throughout this web application we will get that that page appear here and we will get that message um here on this page this page is not designed yet we will going to design that properly in, in next coming episode but for now we have we have established the base uh, along with that as i told in the very beginning told you guys that we are going to do minor improvements on the ui as well so if you guys notice that the footer is not at the bottom it's uh, you know stick with the body the content of the body so first thing is we need to add a minimum height to that container and that would be our main container here right so what we can do is we will go directly to the styles www.style.css here after body we can say for the main uh, element we want mean height to be 560 or 550 uh, px now you can see that it's it's um it's now somewhere not stick with that login form it looks it looks a bit better now so if we start increasing that size we'll see how that gonna work 580 um and then this is my for my big screen not for for my small screen right so uh, we can say um, we have that high to be um 670 which looks good so we can set that to 670 
all right so 670 is done as soon as i log in the application the footer is still there at the bottom which is good so we have fixed that footer uh and the next thing would be um that that products button doesn't look good uh i think we can change this to a link as well so for that one i will go to the uh, views index dot in inside the product folder and there would be one um button not here that would be in store uh, not store it will be in home index uh, yeah that is the button so we don't want this class here it should be normal link and if I refresh that should be gone now products looks good as soon as we click on products we are getting that exception let's reset that code and remove that custom exception and refresh the application now we should get um, proper products from this store so as soon as get refresh we have that products list coming uh, now those images are not looking good uh, those are not in proper size and the padding is not there so what we can do is we can just go back to the products index.cshtml and here we can see 150 pixel is implemented we can change this to hide 50 pixels and um, what else we can do let's let's remove i think this one from here and control this styling through a class um product image right let's create a class with name of product image inside side.cshtml uh, product image we can set height to 50 pixels and padding to 5 pixels all right let's refresh the page now it looks good right both the images are now in proper size and have that padding applied as soon as we click on edit uh, we have that added product you are painting here which is good and also what else we can fix okay at the home we have that view add new store looks good maybe we can we can just expand that button to get to cover the all the width of that form um let's have a look md4 um okay and what about this button uh this button is button button finally all right and with another we have that button already there so if we w100 we have applied previously and to align it to center we applied the style of margin zero auto so we can go and use that as well um what about the button Where's the button like this all right so let's go to the grid store and let's apply that part here and on the form div level we can add um, style okay 
to one is time is equal to this one and we can copy this part all right let's now log in and go to create new store it it's looking good now um all right we have that create store here and we can go back to the list and if we go to the products and we want to apply same design here we can do the same things for the create product form all right so at this level we can apply uh, style this and for the button we can add w100 we get all the width uh, and as soon as we refresh we will have that form aligned in the center all right and i think that go back to list should also be there um inside maybe uh, we can put it here as well inside same form all right looks good and we want to do same thing for the edit button uh add it uh, okay here it's not a best practice uh we should have that set in a class uh we will do that later but this is just to make uh, uh make some quick changes in the ui uh and this would be back to the list point here and that would be width of 100 okay let's try by editing this this looks good go back to form all right so today what we have done mainly we have added the custom middleware for global exception handling and this is not it yet we currently we just uh, set the pace uh, what we are going to do we will be introducing proper logging to this whole application that can be set through the log levels uh, from within uh, that app settings dot json you can see those log levels here we will study these log levels as well and also we are going to add or integrate some proper logging uh, service uh, so that as soon as we push that store management application to some uh, hosting we are not going to you know access those log files um, easily right because for the log files we have to go to the hosting um, space and we need to download all those files so what we will do is we will integrate some um, logging platform um, or exception handling platform uh, for this purpose i will want to use um, sentry.io this is a good service to read or list the logs um, and display those logs in the proper dashboard so we don't need to go to the hosting you know um, hosting provider we will get all those logs generated here we can set the alerts uh, as through sms emails or notification so that we get those timely on our mobile device or our uh, desktop pc so that's all for today's video and we'll see you in the next video uh, very soon so for till then have a good day and keep coding in case of any question or queries do ask in the comments and take care bye